This is the trailer where I taught my first class. It's where I became a teacher. It's also where I almost quit teaching altogether. And I want to tell you teachers that story. You know, if you're a student, you can listen in as well. Now, I haven't been back here in a long time, so I've, let's go see it together. Oh, no way. It hasn't even changed a little. Yes, this is it. This is it. Wow. So it's 2012 and I get hired by this small private school to teach history, which is all good. But a couple weeks later, the administrator asked me if I could teach AP US history. And because I am by nature a hopeless optimist, I said yes without any further consideration. But here's the thing. I was not a good student in high school. I never took an AP course in my life, so I didn't really know what I was agreeing to. But it was gonna be okay because the administration said they registered me for an AP Summer Institute and I would learn everything I needed to know there. So, you know. <laughs> I got this. So I show up to my APSI and sit in a classroom with about 20 other teachers. And as we introduce ourselves, I'm starting to get anxious. That guy over there has been teaching APUSH for 20 years. That woman over there has been teaching it for 15 years. And as it turns out, I was the only teacher in that class who had precisely zero experience. And I felt a little bit vulnerable and exposed, I will admit. But, you know, I made friends with the fact that I was a beginner. And, hey, I'm here to be trained. So I bucked up and gave myself to the process. But as it went on, it seemed like the instructor was deferring to the teachers with more experience. She was throwing around acronyms and jargon that I never heard of, but everyone else seemed to know. And so I walked out of that training on that last day pretty confused. On one hand, I still didn't know much, but on the other hand, I had the certificate in my hand and I was sanctioned by the college board to teach their course. But again, let me remind you, hopeless optimism. I figured that if I had been through the training, then I had everything I needed to teach this course. And I just knew that by the middle of the semester, every student would be standing on their desk saying, oh, captain, my captain. It was going to be the best course of their lives, but a few weeks in, everything started to crumble. Like I thought I knew what a DBQ was and how to teach it, but I couldn't answer half the questions that the students brought up. I thought I understood the themes and the skills and the stimulus-based multiple choice questions, but it soon became very apparent to everybody that I had no idea what I was doing. And at that point, it wasn't so much, oh, captain, my captain, as it was Ferris Bueller's day off. And that's when the stress began to multiply. Nobody wants to look like a fool, especially in front of a group of teenagers. So I began scouring the internet, trying to learn what I didn't know, trying to piece together some kind of strategy for serving my students. Well, I worked way too many hours outside of class trying to find whatever I could to best serve my students. And every day I entered my class with a confident posture and a smile on my face. And I thought I was fooling them relatively well, but then came the moment when everything fell apart. I stood to begin my lesson and a dear 15 year old girl in the back right over there raised her hand and said, Mr. Heimler, you look tired. Are you okay? And at that moment, I felt entirely exposed. Like all the stress and incompetence that I thought I was hiding so well was actually on display for everyone to see. As I drove home that night, I could only see two ways forward. Either I quit or I figured out how to do this job and to teach this course in a way that doesn't require 15 year old girls to comment on how haggard I look. And here's the thing, I know many of you relate to this. Just last week, this article came out in USA Today and there are dozens more like it that have been published in the last few months. Teachers are struggling. Well, that night, driving home, I reflected on the vocation of teaching. I thought about how really deep inside I wanted to help my students enter into the expansive beauty that is the study of history. And so for the next few years, I experimented. I, I tried and I failed. I employed new techniques. And eventually, I got to the place where I scratched and clawed a way of teaching together that would serve both my students well and keep me from wanting to quit. And if you can relate to this, especially if you're a new teacher, I want to help write a different story for you. Consider this your invitation to join me and my colleagues for my Heimler's History Summer Teacher Training this year. We're doing it for AP US History and AP World History and all the information is linked below. Over the last couple of years, teachers have been to this and they love it. I didn't even pay for these endorsements. I mean, look at this. So over the course of three days, we give you everything you need to walk into your class and feel confident that you are serving your students well. Now, everybody is welcome, of course, but we're presenting this material with new teachers in mind, which is to say teachers in their first five years. So other teachers have found this immensely helpful and I think you will too. So look, I don't want my story to be your story. You deserve my much better than that, and I hope to see you this summer. All right, goodbye, old friend. Oh.